Chapters 6 to 19 of the Book of Revelation outline events that will happen in a period of at least seven years between the rapture of the church, sometimes known as the secret coming of the Lord Jesus, his coming to the air, and his public coming, the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, when he shall again stand on the earth. So far in chapters 6 to 9, the focus has been on two major wars, one in the first four seals and the other in the sixth trumpet, the second woe. But accompanied with this is huge environmental effects, starvation coming from the first war, climactic events so that a third of the earth's pastures and trees are destroyed, a third of the sea is destroyed, a third of the water of the earth is polluted so that men die. And the result of all of these dramatic events is half of the world population is dead. But a key thing that's happened during this period of time is that a huge number of people have chosen to acknowledge that these things are written in the Word of God and they have been slain for the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus. They are contrasted with the majority that refuses to repent from their murders, from their drugs, from their immorality and from theft, despite all that is happening around them. It leaves us wondering how come the world is so resistant to repenting. People making their own solutions to the problem rather than repenting, submitting themselves to the grace of God. A large part of the next few chapters deals with this rebellion of the world and shows that it is not just men being ignorant, it is in fact men, the political leaders in particular, being defiant and rebellious and leading the people in rebellion against God. In Elijah's day, he posed the question, why do you halt between two opinions? If God is God, worship him. If Baal is God, worship him. The Great Tribulation is all about making people decide which side they are on. So now we come to Revelation chapter 10. I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud. And a rainbow was on his head. His face was like the sun, his feet like pillars of fire. He had a little book open in his hand, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roars. When he cried out, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now when the seven thunders uttered their voices, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Seal up the things which the seven thunders uttered and do not write them. The angel who was standing on the sea and on the land raised up his hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are in them, the earth and the things that are in them, and the sea and the things that are in them, that there should be delay no longer. But in the days of the sounding of the seventh angel, which is about to sound, the mystery of God would be finished, as he declared to his servants, the prophets. Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me and said, Go, take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take and eat it and it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And he said to me, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, 
tongues and kings. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share these 11 verses from Revelation chapter 10. The timing of this little interlude is just before the sounding of the seventh trumpet, which will culminate in the glorious return of the Lord Jesus Christ. At this time, something happens which is represented by seven thunders uttering their voices. Now, we've seen a couple of times the reference to thunders, lightnings, voices coming from the throne. So this is some kind of declaration from God, but it is not revealed to us what it contains. In John 12, as Jesus anticipates the cross, he said, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore the people who stood by and heard it said it had thundered, and others said an angel had spoken to him. On that occasion the words were directed to the Lord Jesus, but not understood by the people in general. Jesus said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. So the passages are linked. And the angel is declaring, There shall be no more delay. The Lord will be glorified again. We have a mighty angel coming from heaven. A rainbow was on his head. The rainbow speaking of the grace of God. His face was like the sun, his feet like pillars of fire. And he has a little book, which John must eat. This angel stands on the sea and on the land, with one hand raised up to heaven. He declares on the authority of the one who created heaven and the things that are in them, the earth and the things that are in them, the sea and the things that are in them, that there should be delay no longer. This is the last opportunity a person has to believe in the Lord Jesus. Because in the days of the sounding of the seventh trumpet, when he is about to sound, the mystery of God would be finished as he declared to his servants, the prophets. The reference to the mystery of God seems to connect with the church in the sense that salvation of Gentiles was announced in association with the church. Jesus spoke in parables in Matthew 13, but he said to his disciples that the mystery of the kingdom was revealed to them. And Paul declares that it was explained to him and he presented it to us in Ephesians chapter 3. It is probably on the basis of this that some commentators would put the rapture of the church at this point in time. But the majority note the absence of the Holy Spirit in chapters 6 to 10, indicating that the church is removed before chapter 6. There are several passages where the church is promised not to to enter into the tribulation period. Nevertheless, this tribulation period has resulted in many people standing for God to be received into God's kingdom. The angel stands on the sea and on the earth. The sea frequently refers to the nations. The earth points to the nation of Israel. We'll see that this is the focus of what will happen next. It's all about God and his people. And the Jewish people will call upon the name of the Lord that he will save them and they will be saved. It is God's world. He created everything. So now he is coming in judgment. He has his purpose to save many sons into glory. But those who refuse to be saved will be cast out. So John eats the book. It tastes nice, but it turns his stomach bitter. There is much bitterness in the third woe.